We're going to look at designing a controller for a discrete time system and the approach that we're going to take in this video is using S-plane techniques from con classical controls. Here's the example exercise that we'll work with. For the system shown here where we have a digital controller and a plant, the plant transfer function is given by this equation, tan over s plus 4 times s plus 6. And we want to design a controller such that we get a 16% overshoot and a threefold reduction in settling time. So those are our design parameters. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to design the continuous time compensator using root locus techniques. So here's the block diagram for that system. And then we're going to convert it to a discrete time domain. And you see we have the digital compensator, the transfer function in terms of z, and then the plant with the sample and hold. So we have gp of z. Now we'll spend a few minutes on the continuous time compensator design. In order to get the desired settling time, we need to know the uncompensated settling time. So we'll let GC, the compensator transfer function, be equal to 1. And then we end up with the closed loop transfer function shown here. For a second order system, here's the characteristic equation. So we can figure out what the damping ratio and natural frequency are for this uncompensated system. So also we have the settling time. So the settling time is 4 over the product of damping ratio and natural frequency. The uncompensated settling time is thus 4 over 5, which is 0.8 seconds. And so our desired settling time is a third of that. So we have 8 over 30 seconds. The desired damping ratio, zeta, is given by this equation. Natural log of percent overshoot divided by pi squared plus anyway, square root of pi squared plus natural log squared percent overshoot, and that gives us a damping ratio of 0.504. Now we can figure out what the desired closed loop poles are. Here's the equation for the poles in terms of the parameters zeta and omega n, and just factoring or substituting in from the equations that we had, zeta over omega n is 4 over 8 divided by 30, and that gives us the closed loop poles are negative 15 on the real axis and plus or minus 25.7 in the imaginary direction. So we're going to work in MATLAB some now and the things we're going to do on this compensator design is we'll check to see if these clo the desired closed loop poles are on the uncompensated root locus and if so then we can just add um, proportional compensator to change the gain and move the closed loop poles to those desired values. Um, but it turns out that's not going to be the case, so we will add a zero, an open loop zero, and this is a PD compensator, and that will move the root locus to pass through to the desired poles. And then we will adjust the gain so that the closed loop poles are match our desired values and figure out what our compensator is, the transfer function for our compensator. And once we're done designing the compensator, we'll verify the system performance. Mm, I went too quickly to that. So now we'll move over to MATLAB. And I have a script here called example design. Here is the transfer function for the plant. And here's the root locus for the uncompensated system. So you can see that negative 15 in the real axis is not on the root locus. So we need to have a controller, a compensator with a zero. So we've added a zero to the open loop transfer function. And here's the new root locus. So if that zero is at negative 10, then here's what the root locus looks like. But we see that 15 and uh, I think it was plus or minus 25 are not on the root locus, so let's try a higher or a, a different zero value. So now we have 40 is our zero, and we've got 25, I'm sorry, no, negative 15 and 25 is close, so it looks more like 
27 so or anyway it's not quite so so we'll try a different value and here is negative 15 and 27 so that's too big uh, let's go back to 43 okay so there's our 0 at 43 and you can see the root locus now pretty much goes through that desired pole location I think it was negative 15 and 25 point I guess I can go back and check 25.7 negative 15 25.7 Okay, and then we can use the rlocfind tool to get the gain at, at the desired place. So negative 15 and 25.7, right about there. So we end up with a gain of 1.9, and that gives us if we have a gain of 1.9 and a pole at uh, negative 40. I'm sorry, a zero at negative 43, then we end up with uh, poles at negative 15 and 25.7 so that those are good values so here is our PD controller the gain is 1.998 and the 0 is at negative 43 there's also another way that we can use MATLAB to design controllers with root locus techniques and it's called CISO tool oh wait so here's the step response so let's verify the step response there we go. So we end up with about 0.267 is the settling time, like we calculated, or 8 over 30, and then about 16% uh, overshoot. So back to the CISO tool. It's a useful technique or tool that we can use f um, for designing compensators with root locus techniques. So here is the uncompensated root locus. We're going to add some design requirements. We will add a settling time and this is a settling time of one second. Mm, we'll modify that in a second. You should be able to uh, type in exactly what you want. And here's a percent overshoot of four. So let's go ahead and change the settling time to what we wanted. So you can see a line of constant settling time is a vertical line on, um, in the S-plane. So all the poles on this line will have the same settling time. And then uh, lines of constant damping ratio are all at the same angle. So now we're changing the damping ratio. I don't know if you can see the font down at the bottom, but mm, this is a, I'm trying to drag it to be 16. It didn't quite work. So here at the bottom you can see the damping ratio. Right now it's at 17%, so let's see if I can change it to 16%. Again, like I said, you should be able to type these directly in instead of having to drag it. Okay, 16.1, close enough. And now let's add a zero to our open loop transfer function and see everything. Now we know we need to drag it to about 40. And right here is the intersection of our settling time requirement and our percent overshoot requirement so we want the root locus to intersect that and you can see as we drag the zero the root locus passes through that point and now what's left to do is change the gain um, so that the closed loop poles are at that point and that's pretty close so we can check now the values that we ended up with come here edit compensator and then store design and then we get the gain 1.94 and in my MATLAB script I was prompting for that value so let me just copy and paste it over there and here is where the zero is located negative 42.5 instead of 43 like we had before alright so there now we're done with the compensator design in the mm, in MATLAB or continuous domain. So here is the transfer function for the compensator and the transfer function for uh, compensator cascaded with the plant. All right. Now we need we're going to go to converting this to the discrete time domain. And let me go back to the slides. I want to talk about that a little bit. 
So here is a figure a block diagram showing our discrete time system. In order to convert our continuous system to discrete time, we need to choose a sampling period. And we're going to eventually use the Tustin transform to approximate um, the transfer function for the compensator. One guideline for the Tustin transform is that the maximum sampling period should be in the range of 0.15 omega phi m to 0.5. Five. Anyway, this is the 0 dB frequency in radians per second. So we need to get the 0 dB frequency for the for G of S, which we just showed, and then we'll use this as a guideline for finding the sampling period. Now, <coughs> so like I said, we need the reason we need G sub C the, um, in terms of Z is in order to implement the digital controller. So we'll look at that in a subsequent video. Um, but we're going to use the Tustin transform to approximate GC of Z because you can't use the zero order hold approach for the transfer function of the compensator. You can see here um, just a close up of that feed forward portion, the computer emulating the compensator, so we have GC of Z, as cascaded with the plant um, with sample and hold. And I have here GC of Z hat over it to show that it's approximation of GC of Z. And like I said, we're going to write the code for this controller once we find GC of Z in a subsequent video. The reason it's an approximation is because we're using this bilinear transform. We're substituting s equals 2 over t times z minus 1 over z plus 1 into our continuous time transfer function. And one problem with this is that the accuracy of this approximation diminishes at high frequencies. So we want to get an approximation of the z transform of gc of s. And the compensator transfer function takes the form of k of gain times s plus b, where b is the value of our zero. So our approximation is gc of s, where we evaluate it at s equals 2 over t times u minus 1 over z plus 1. Substituting that into here, we get 2k um, plus kb. And then rearranging everything, we end up with this expression. And k would be what we found from the continuous time compensator design. Same with b, so the gain and the zero that we had, or actually the negative value of the zero. We had a zero at negative 42.5, so b is positive 42.5. And then that will give us the transfer function in discrete time for the compensator. And we'll step back over to MATLAB now. Let me make sure, yeah. Oh, so in MATLAB, for this discrete time system, we're going to first generate a Bode plot of um, the compensator cascaded with the plant, and that's in order to find the 0 dB frequency, which we'll, we'll use to help us figure out what sampling period we want. Then we're going to perform the Z transform of the compensator. Mm, oops, so this is the Z transform of the compensator, well, we're using the Tustin transform of the compensator. And then we'll take the Z transform of zero order hold and uh, cascade it with the plant. So this line is incorrect right here because the compensator is going to use the Tustin transform and the zero order hold and plant cascade will be the Z transform. Then we will plot the step response for different values of T. And compare those values. So over to MATLAB. Let's see, we're going to uh, make a Bode plot, use MATLAB to create a Bode plot of GC of S, and we want to find the 0 dB frequency. So let's see, we want to look where the magnitude is 0 dB, and it turns out that that is about mm, 30 radians per second. So we'll just type in 30. So our maximum value for the sampling period should be about 5 milliseconds to maybe 17 milliseconds. So we'll just use 
one millisecond for the sampling period. And we end up with, um, here is the transform for GC. And you can see it has, it looks like um, the value that we calculated over here. So we've got Well, it doesn't exactly look like it. Um, anyway, the factor for z is k times 2 over t minus b, and that ends up being 3,970. And then the constant term is kb minus 2k over t, and that ends up being negative 3,805. So this transfer function came from the Tustin transform of the continuous time compensator that we came up with. And then here is the um, zero order hold cascaded with the plant, and we end up with this transfer function. So this transfer function is marginally stable. See, we have a pole at one. And we won't, we'll go ahead and plot the step response of this. And where is that? Okay. So this is the step response for that discrete time system. You can see here that it's shown um, as discrete values. And now just overlay on this the step response whenever we have t is 5 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds. Let me zoom into this portion. So here it is with t is 0.1 sec mil or 1 millisecond, here's 5 milliseconds, and here's 10 milliseconds. And now let's overlay the ideal continuous time step response. So you can see that the smaller sampling period gets closer to that ideal system. And like I said in a subsequent video we will look at how to write code for this compensator GC of Z so that we can implement this controller in a digital computer.